Hey there, CrossFit Closer family. Coach Adam here, and you've made it to part four of our four-part series on how to have a better or get your first handstand. So if you've worked your way through the first three parts um, and you're good and comfortable with those, today we'll start working on the freestanding handstand and potentially handstand walk. As I've said in the other videos, if you're new to this, um, have someone watch you. Have some mats, have a coach. Uh, you know, safety obviously is the first and most important thing. Take it step by step um, and be supervised, have a coach. Before we get into our handstand, we want to make sure that the shoulders are ready and warmed up. So as we've done in the first three videos, we'll go through a little warm up here and then you should be good to go. The warm up is going to be three rounds, so three times through, five burpees, ten shoulder T's and 10 shoulder Y's. I'll give you a quick demo of those first. The first one, the burpee, you're just gonna get yourself down onto the floor, get yourself back up off the floor, celebrate the fact that you were able to do so. You can do five of those. Then we're gonna hinge over at the hips, making sure the spine's nice and neutral, and then pull the shoulder blades together while pulling the arms as far away from each other as you can. You do 10 of those. After that, same hinge, and then you're gonna take the arms straight overhead, reaching them as far as you can away, back down, and repeat for 10 as well. Once you've done those three rounds of five burpees, 10 T's, and 10 Y's, then you're probably ready to get upside down. Now that your warm up is complete, it's time to get going. So if you were pretty comfortable last week kicking up to the handstand, that's gonna be our starting point for this first one. What we're gonna work on is once we're in that handstand supported by the wall, we're gonna slowly take one foot off the wall and work on bringing the other foot off the wall and finding balance. The majority of the balance, as long as the body is really tight, abs on, butt squeeze, leg squeeze, and together, the majority of the balance is gonna come through modulations of weight in the hand. So, Moving the weight back and forth through the fingertips and the palm is gonna allow you to find balance when you're working up there. So, what that's gonna look like is you're gonna get into your kick up to the wall. Initially with both feet against the wall, we'll pull one foot off, and I'm just gonna to try to find balance, pulling the other foot off a little bit and working on balance in the hands. If I kick down, no problem, take a shake out, kick back up, and continue that. Once you feel pretty confident with that and you can find some balance, then if you're comfortable, you can work in some open space. Now, I used to say when we were working on handstands that you should learn to stand before you learn to walk. And over the years with watching more athletes and thinking about the, the development of, of how we are as humans, um, I've changed my tone a little bit. So I, I generally will say now that work on both of them together, but you're likely to learn to walk before you learn to stand still. Just like if you think about a child uh, learning to move, they're not gonna stand up and stand still and proud at first, they're gonna stumble, uh, catch themselves falling, and that's the beginning of walking. So that's probably um, what you're gonna do as well with your handstand, uh, instead of standing up tall, being good and comfortable with that, and then learning to walk over time. So if you're ready to um, kick up in a, in a freestanding area without the wall, uh, you know, my favorite way for this is trial and error. Get more and more comfortable kicking up, falling down, kicking up, falling down, taking a step, kicking up, falling down, and so on and so forth. The one thing that you do want to think of when you, when you do start walking is once you kick up, if you're straight, there will be no movement. There will be no momentum. If you let the feet curl over just a little bit and that little bit of weight falling out this way is going to start to pull you and then you're able to catch up with your hands. So what I suggest is find yourself some, some nice open space where you're comfortable and then just practice kicking up. If you don't get up all the way, no big deal. Try a little bit harder. If you kick too hard, just step over the other side until you become more and more comfortable kicking up, letting the feet go, taking a couple steps, and then coming back down. Now when you're working on your handstand, uh, be it on the wall or freestanding, there's a few little technique pieces or position uh, pieces that we want to be thinking about uh, so that our handstand can be efficient and we can work on progressing on top of that and building on it as we go. So those are basically your handstand should look very similar uh, in terms of body positions as when you're standing up on your feet. 
Uh, if you're doing a wall, if you're doing a handstand walk, there might be a little bit of an arch, but it should be very similar. So my handstand should look like this, upside down. Um, from the front, same idea. Feet are pretty close together. Um, I might be, excuse me, pointing my toes if I'm in a handstand, but it looks like this. A lot of times you'll see people in a handstand and the knees will be bent and the arch will be back and then everything is broken. The more tight we can be and aligned, the better the handstand's gonna be. So this position here, is gonna be much more sturdy and efficient than if I'm broken. I'll try to do a bad example. <laughs> Obviously, I'm not able to hold that, but you can see that the first one is a lot more controlled, just like if I'm walking. If I'm walking around, this is controlled. I'm not gonna walk around like this. Not gonna be as good for my body, not gonna be as efficient, and long term, it's not gonna do very well. So if you can always think about squeezing the abs, squeezing your butt, squeezing your legs and having them together, then you're probably gonna be in a pretty good spot, in a pretty good position when you're doing your handstands. Once you are pretty comfortable walking around on your hands, then I, f I find the most impressive thing is to be able to stand still. So what I would suggest is give yourself a box on the floor to stand in. Try to stay in it. As you get more and more uh, proficient at doing that, tighten up your box, make it smaller and smaller and smaller until you're no longer allowed to move your hands. So you kick up, stay as long as you can. If you wanna move a hand, kick back down, kick back up, and only practice while you can keep it nice and stable on your hands. That being said, obviously, that's, that's further on down the road. Um, you know, don't be frustrated if you can't stand still for a minute your first time practicing this. It takes years of practice. So hopefully, with all of these pieces, the last four videos that we've put out, including this one, if you take your time and work at a speed that's appropriate for you, you definitely should be able to improve your handstand, get your first handstand, get your first handstand walk, improve your handstand walk, um, or at least maybe be, be entertained by watching these videos. I hope you've taken away something from this, and uh, we'll be back with more. Take care.